What is high bandwidth memory? How is it important? Will my toaster ever be able to toast both sides of a slice of bread perfectly? Jack, put this here because Linus isn't going to read. I read it. First off, high bandwidth memory, or HBM, is, well, it's a new type of memory. AMD has been working on this for quite some time now, and they've partnered with SK Hynix, all in hope of turning this technology into the industry standard for graphics. Now, HBM is different from GDDR5, or Graphics DDR5, which, by the way, is based on DDR3, in the way that it is manufactured. So with GDDR5, the memory chips are actually soldered onto the PCB around whoops, the GPU. Simple, right? HBM is actually a little bit more complicated. You start with a package substrate. On top of that, you add an interposer, which is a fancy name for a silicon wafer. And the interposer is what allows for the memory and the GPU to be closer to each other. So on top of that interposer layer, there's a GPU chip. And then around it, you've got logic dies with the actual memory stacked vertically on top of the logic dies and put really close to the GPU, moving the memory so close that you're able to increase performance. Vertically stacked memory chips are interconnected by microscopic wires called through silicon vias, or TSVs. This manufacturing process allows for better performance and smaller surface area. For example, one gigabyte of GDDR5 could take up to a space of 28 by 24 millimeters, whereas one gigabyte of HBM we're looking at only about seven by five millimeters, thanks to the memory being vertically stacked. It also has lower power consumption and ultra wide communication lanes. Now, some of you might be asking, why do we even need HBM? GDDR5 has served us well for the last seven years. Good question. As GPUs, the processors on your graphics card continue to grow faster, their appetite for Lightning fast delivery of information continues to increase and GDDR5 has continued to sort of scale with that. We've increased clock speed. AMD has in the past released cards with up to 512 bit buses. So that's like tons of chips running in parallel. But quite frankly, what happens is that increases both chip and PCB complexity and power consumption to the point where it's gotten, where now if we have to try to increase GDDR5's performance to keep up, it consumes so much power that you're left with less power budget for the GPU itself, and you can't make that as powerful anyway, so you reach this wall. HBM, through its design, is actually able to be way more efficient, handling up to three times the bandwidth per watt compared to GDDR5. It also features a super wide bus, it's 1024-bit versus GDDR5's 32-bit, and while GDDR5 can hit clock speeds in excess of, you know, 1750 megahertz, so that's bandwidth of up to 28 gigabytes per chip, HBM's clock speed can hit up to 500 megahertz, but with bandwidth greater than 100 gigabytes per stack thanks to its 1024-bit interface. And the voltage is only 1.3 volts for HBM when compared to GDDR5's 1.5. So as a result of all of this, we get a smaller PCB. That's how a flagship card... Well, there is an attached radiator, but that's how a flagship card ends up this small. And eventually, smaller footprints for entire PC systems. So then the final question is, where can you find HBM technology? Well, right now, the only card in the world is the AMD Radeon R9 Fury X. This is a mass-produced card with HBM technology. And obviously, being new tech, well, that comes with a hefty price tag and some limitations. It's only available in a four gigabyte variant, likely due to cost and manufacturing complexity. But that's the price of being an early adopter. And as with all things, the prices will inevitably drop and you'll have HBM in your toaster, making sure that it's even on both sides in no time. That's it for this episode. Let us know down below what you think of HBM. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.